Things to know and do. Uh, there are a number of things that you should know prior to owning a franchise, and I'm going to I'm going to start with the franchisee perspective and then get to the franchise or perspective. Um, you need to know what the condition of the franchise uh, concept is, the franchise system. Uh, you have to know how other franchisees in that system are doing. You need to know uh, whether or not uh, there are major financial problems. Uh, you're going to need to know all the costs associated with operating the franchise. There is a ton of work to, that you have to do uh, in terms of uh, doing your due diligence. Are there any products and services that you have to buy from the franchisor? or from the franchisor's suppliers or distribution network. How are you going to get those supplies? Uh, are there requirements about how, uh, uh, about how you go about doing that? Uh, there's a lot of information in the Franchise Disclosure Document, or the FDD. Um, this used to be known as the, uh, the Uniform Franchise Offering Circular, or UFOC. Uh, last year, what was it, last July, uh, they switched to the FDD. So if you hear about a UFOC, uh, that was just the, the previous version of what is now known as the Franchise Disclosure Document. This is required of all franchise concepts, all franchisors, by the Federal Trade Commission. They have to, they have, to have a, an FDD that uh, lays out a, a number of different issues, and I'll cover a, a lot of those in just a moment, uh, so that you have all the, the uh, most important information to, uh, going into uh, owning a franchise. But what is the franchise disclosure document and what information does it provide? Basically, it provides you all the information that you might want to know about how the, the, op the uh, franchise concept uh, is operated, uh, who are the people who actually own it, how is it run from, is it a corporate structure, is it an individual structure. Um, ben mentioned a local investment bank that owns 11 uh, franchise concepts. They happen to be a few floors downstairs from me. Um, and one of the things that, that uh, you wouldn't have known before the franchise disclosure document uh, was that all these franchise concepts have this, this uh, parent company. Now you, have to, now you can know about the, the parent company, and you also get to know about the, the uh, financial condition of that parent company. Uh, in the FDD, you now know uh, all of the litigation that uh, has been ongoing with the franchisor. Uh, franchisors are also required to now disclose all of their uh, lawsuits against franchisees. Um, these are really important things for you to know because, again, you're trying to determine whether or not this business model fits with your risk appetite and if it makes sense to you. Um, you get to know about whether or not the franchise uh, or has been uh, in bankruptcy, uh, why they went into, ba into bankruptcy. You get to know things that are, that are important to, the, to your own bottom line, the amount of the initial franchise fee, the other fees, for royalties, management service fees, advertising and marketing. Because when you build your, your business plan and you look at, at your accounting and your bottom line, you have to incorporate all of this into uh, how you run your business and whether or not it makes financial sense for you. Uh, you have to look at the restrictions on the type of, as I mentioned before, on the types of products and, and sources of those products that you're going to use. So for instance, if you are a McDonald's franchisee, uh, you'll have to know where you're going to be getting all the different things that go into uh, your, uh, your, your franchise. So where, where are the buns coming from? Where are the, the Happy Meal toys coming from? Uh, it's spelled out to some extent in the, the franchise disclosure document, also spelled out in the operating manual. Um, but these are th questions that you're going to want to ask uh, the franchisor. Um, again, as Ben mentioned, what are the, the franchisee's oblig obligations? It's going to be seven pages, it's going to be ten pages, it's going to be a hundred pages. There, there are going to be a lot of requirements on you, the, fran the potential franchisee, on things that you can and can't do. You need to know those backwards and forwards because you can get in a lot of trouble. Uh, you can be the, the greatest uh, franchisee uh, in their system making a ton of money, but if you, if you don't follow their, uh, their obligations and their restrictions and the covenants, uh, they may just pull that away from you because they are trying to keep some consistency in their system and they don't want their franchisees uh, moving away from their set uh, program. Financing. Um, times are tough. Uh, the good thing about franchising, and I think John uh, would agree with me on this, is that 
the franchise concept and franchising in, in general is a much less risky uh, 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 opportunity and le much less risky business model than a lot of other uh, business uh, models out there. So franchisers' obligations. You need to know how much assistance they're going to provide. You're going to need to know about how their operations work, all of their procedures. You need to know about advertising, computer systems, and training. That's all spelled out in the FDD. Um, another key piece uh, that has already been mentioned this morning is territory. Uh, you need to know exactly what it is that you're getting when you're buying into the system. What are the constraints around how you can market, how you can uh, sell your franchise concept, uh, your franchise rather. Um, does it require that your, your territory be uh, 15th Street to 14th Street between F and G in Washington, D.C.? Do you have all of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area? What does the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area mean? Um, you need to understand what the territory, territory requ requirements are uh, and, and how you're going to best take advantage of that. Um, I'm going to quickly go s through some of these. You need to know the trademarks, the, the patents, the copyrights, basically all the intellectual property that is available to you uh, and also how you can use that. You need to know how you terminate the contract, how you renew, because it may be that it's a 10-year agreement, and then what happens at the end of the 10 years? There's no, there's no guarantee, unless it's spelled out, that, uh, that you're going to be able to uh, run that again. Some of the, the most important issues, the financial performance representations. You have to go over their, their financials, their financial statements, their representations with a fine-tooth comb. You need to go over it with your lawyer. You need to go over it with your accountant. You need to understand how it's going to operate, how it's going to work, whether or not you're going to make money. Um, I can't um, uh, tell you enough how, many how much time you should spend on understanding both the, f the franchise disclosure document and the operating manual if you can get it. Um, I'd suggest that you read it at least three times and then you read it again with your attorney and your accountant so that you really understand all of the fine points of the FDD and their operating manual. Um, so I'm going to switch to the franchisor side. There's some keys to, uh, to, knowing, uh, to understanding how to go into franchising if, if, you, are, if you have a, a, a concept. Um, you're going to have to do a number of different things. You're going to have to do all those things that I just talked about in preparing for the franchisees. You're going to have to develop a franchise operations manual. You're going to have to understand all the processes and procedures uh, uh, that you need to operate your uh, franchisees. Uh, because what you are doing is taking this thing that you've developed and you've spent hours and weeks and months and years uh, working on, and you're going to have to give it to someone else uh, who doesn't have all that experience. Uh, you're going to have to establish a system and you're going to have to stick to it. Franchisors, you have to know how you're going to support your franchisees. What type of training are you, you going to provide? What type of financing are you going to help provide? What's your ongoing level of support? Um, there's a whole host of other things that, that you should think about. Uh, the disclaimer is this presentation is not a substitute for working with a competent attorney and accountant well versed in franchising, especially antitrust laws, trademark laws, the Federal Trade Commission franchise rule and applicable state laws. Um, you need to work with a competent attorney, someone who n knows and understands franchising. You need to work with an accountant who can help you digest all of the financial data that you're going to be getting from the franchisors if you're a franchisee. If you're a franchisor uh, or a potential franchisor, you need to work with them because you're not going to be able to think of everything. You're not going to be able to, uh, uh, even if you are an attorney yourself, you're not going to be able to do all the work uh, on your own. Also, don't let the attorney and the accountant make decisions for you. Uh, they are not you. They can't stand in for you. They don't know your personal situation. Uh, whether you're a franchisee, a potential franchisee or a potential franchisor, you have to make the decisions based on your personal situation. So get their best uh, guidance, get their best information, and you make the decision uh, uh, for your own personal situation. You can also go to our website at gravesandhortonllc.com, and I'm happy to talk with anyone afterwards. So thank you very much.